So the objectives of this chapter, uh, we're going to learn why is algorithm analysis important, um, and especially this is important to computer science. Uh, we're going to be able to use what's called big O or omega notation to describe execution time, and this is one of the biggest things you'll get out of this chapter. Uh, we're going to know common big O categories, understand big O timing for common operations on list and dictionaries in Python, and we're going to know how to measure or benchmark simple Python programs. And while we're going through this, we'll look at some examples of code. Now, first of all, let's talk about if we want to look at programs uh, and we want to compare programs and see which program is better, the first example he shows in the book is something like this. Uh, so this is, both of these programs do the same thing. They add the numbers 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n and they define this inside of a function. Uh, so the program on the right, they define a function called sum of n, and you pass it n. It sets up a sum, and then it loops th through the range 1 to n minus 1, so that's going to, the, uh, the value i will have 1 up to n, and it keeps adding i to the sum, so it's going to accumulate adding these all together, and finally it returns the number. So if you print it out, uh, and call it with uh, n of 5, you'll see it prints 15. Here's another program. It's exactly identical to the program on the right. It accomplishes the same thing, uh, but you could say uh, if you compared these, which is a better program? Well, you say this one doesn't make any sense. You can't figure out what the program is supposed to do, uh, or if it does it correctly by just reading the code. Uh, so because in that they've chose all nonsensical names for everything they could name as names that don't have any relationship to what's going on. Uh, so th this is one way you can compare programs. In fact, there's a whole part of software engineering where you look about you look at uh, how well a program self-documents itself and is understandable to other humans. Uh, so that becomes an important factor when looking at programs. Let's look at what else can we compare. Uh, well, we can compare how much memory does a program use, or how readable is it, or is it self-commenting. Uh, we can look at how fast is the algorithm for doing things, and we can measure other things. So there's a lot of things you can measure about a program. So what do we want to be concerned with? And probably the most important thing is what we call computing resources, and those fall into speed and memory how fast or how much processor time does the program use and how much memory does it use up not only in terms of RAM but maybe in terms of disk size. Uh, so those are probably the most important things that computer science people are interested in S in speed and the size of data that has to be stored. Uh, now in fact the most important thing they look at is speed because if your program is too slow for really large problems uh, it it becomes a big problem. In fact, we'll look at some problems take are so slow that you really can't solve them. Uh, so we're going to look at how do you measure this. So we're going to be concerned with speed. And why not memory size? Well, you know, memory size used to be very important to computer scientists. When I started, uh, that was what I spent most of my time was how do I fit a program and its data into a very small memory size because memory was very expensive and you didn't have a lot of it. It was actually measured in kilobytes, uh, not even megabytes. Uh, and then memory was measured in megabytes. And now memory is measured in gigabytes and usually you have at least two gigabytes in a desktop system and ones you buy today will have 8 to 16 gigabytes. And in a modern server you could have uh, 50 gigabytes or so you can have a lot of memory and even really large systems have terabytes of memory. So memory is becoming very cheap and for problems if you consider if you wanted to store everyone's name in the world there's only a few billion people. Uh, you can probably store that on a modern desktop system um, with maybe 16 uh, 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 gigabytes, which a uh, gig is essentially uh, 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 the same as uh, a billion. And you can easily store it in modern disk drives. So, so measuring 
an algorithm, we're going to be mostly interested in measuring the speed. And um, so we want to look at how do we measure the speed of algorithm A versus another algorithm B for solving a problem. Now one way is to do it is actually write both and then benchmark their speed by timing them. And so let's look at that. So we're going to look at how we're, we're going to do that as well as uh, we're actually going to measure the algorithm we just looked at earlier that was written in uh, both something that was readable and something was not. So here's that algorithm to sum uh, from 1 to n and we've added some extra code I've marked in, in blue. I didn't mark this here. But you have to import a special module called the time module in Python. And then uh, this definition here, what we're going to do is before we do the actual work of summing up everything, we're going to get the time from this time module. And this is actually the system time in seconds. On a, a, a system, it's actually the number of seconds since January 1st of 1970. It's usually called the uh, Unix Epoch Time. And then when we're done doing all this work, we get the time that it stopped, which is going to be also the number of times in seconds. And then we subtract the two, we have the elapsed time it took to do this. So we're going to change the return statement to return a tuple, two values, the sum, which is the actual work it did, the answer, and then the time it took. Uh, so then we're going to print out times for n set to uh, 100,000. So we're going to add 1 to 100,000. And then we're going to say 4 times in range 5. So we're going to see if the times are constant every time we run it. We're going to run it multiple times. And uh, then we print out the sum is, uh, and then we'll print out the, uh, the actual sum required and then we'll have a, a floating point value which will be the number of seconds. So this is a format string and it's going to format the two values returned by sum of n. So you remember that returns two values. So the first value will go into this percent %d and the second value will go into uh, this format specifier. So when we actually run it, uh, we see this. So we have times for n equals 100,000. And you'll see that for 100,000, it just takes like one thousandth of a second. So, so is that fast or slow? We don't know. But you'll notice that it's, it varies a little bit when we run it, every 100,000. And that's because when you ask your computer to run a program, your computer is doing other things. Uh, it has background task it has to do and uh, so on so your computer may not guarantee the same amount of work on the processor every time you run a program and so that's why one reason you see a slight variation here now we also change the program and I'll upload the program so you can see these uh, these are the times running it for different numbers of uh, lengths of numbers so this is running it for 10,000 100,000 in up to a million and in up to a hundred million. And you can see that the uh, 10,000 uh, is about one thousandth of a second. But when you run it for other numbers, it starts to get more and more time. And when you do 100 million, it takes up to 11 seconds. Now we could we we're going we're to develop another algorithm that has a a lot different performance. So let's look at this. So this is our other first algorithm. We're going to call that algorithm A, which uses a loop to to add up one to n. And you'll see for 100 million, it can take up to 11 seconds. But algorithm B, which we're going to show you, it takes well, it's so small. In fact. The amount it takes, sometimes if I run this, it actually will say zero seconds, is actually down to what's called one tick of the processor, which is a very, very small amount of uh, time. It gets so small, it's hard to measure. It's so fast. And so what's the difference between these algorithms? They're actually going to do the same thing. Algorithm A is going to add up one to uh, n, so one to like 100 million. And algorithm B is also going to add up one to 100 million. But they've they're different algorithms, meaning they, they, they solve the same problem. 
So they're both algorithms for solving adding up 1 to n, uh, but they are different approaches to solving the problem. And this is one of the things we study in computer science. So let's talk a little bit about this symbol here, uh, because we're going to be using it in other places in the course. Uh, you may have run into this in math. This is called the sigma symbol, and it's used to indicate that you're going to sum up a bunch of different terms. So this is the term that you're going to sum up, and uh, you're going to sum it up for i starting at 1, going all the way to n one at a time. So that's what this indicates. And so this notation here indicates that you're going to, the i will be 1 the first term, and then you're going to add i with it being 2 and so on all the way to n, just like our loop. So this terminology, if you, if you say this, you actually mean this long expression, where you all go all the way to n. And I put dot, dot, dot in because we don't want to fill in all the numbers, and n is some arbitrary number. It could be 100 million. Uh, you can simplify this expression to this. I forgot to put the i here, excuse me. So my slide is slightly wrong, but this, this notation should be the same as here. And so you can actually factor this with some algebra, and you just multiply n times n minus 1 and divide by 2, and the answer to this will be exactly the same as this long uh, uh, summation. So this is the other algorithm, just perform this formula. You don't even need a loop. So let's look at when we do that, that's when we get this really fast speed. Now both of these timings are going to vary widely depending on uh, your computer. If you use a very old computer or a, uh, like a Raspberry Pi which has an ARM processor uh, which isn't very powerful, you'll see a large difference in the speed. Also, uh, what language do you implement the uh, algorithm in? Uh, and it can also, it may depend on memory. Our algorithm for this doesn't. But you may have algorithms that uh, memory availability will affect your speed. So we would like, as computer scientists, a way to characterize an algorithm independent of how you implement it. And you remember when we first talked, you can actually implement an algorithm by people doing the computation. So imagine people trying to add up 1 to 100,000. So it's a good thing we have a fast way they can just uh, use it on a calculator.